Hey, what's up? It's your boy JR Strong, Hoodridge Magazine, what's reaching your hood? Block Talk Radio, Key 107 Network, you know? I just want to thank each and every one of y'all, man, for tuning in, for checking us out, man, on Block Talk Radio on the Key 107. I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel, Hood Riches on YouTube. I want to thank you for hitting me up on Facebook, John Wilson, JR Strong with two Gs on Facebook. I want to thank you for just hitting us up on Swagstar Nation. You feel me, Swagstar, man? Shout out to Don J. Man, the track Superstar is hot right now. It's blowing up. Believe me, that's one of the tracks that's going to last straight to the like this year, man. It's a hit, bro. Also want to send a shout out to Achilles on Block Boys Entertainment. Gravity, that's his new video. His new single that's out. And I mean, it's killing YouTube, man. He got over 10,000 hits already. It ain't even been a week yet, you know? And uh, man, I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for tuning in and helping us to spread the word. I want to send a shout out to the Peacekeepers, man. Also to the Bedford Stuyvesant Volunteer Ambulance Corps. And once again, I want to send a shout out to my family at the Keys 107 network.com. That's our website, the Keys 107 network.com. Check it out, check the site out, find out everything you want to find out about any of the shows that we got on the Keys 107 network. On you know, a few more things if you're looking for production or you know, just want to say hi. Check us out. Don't forget, thekeys107network.com. All right? I'm your man, JR Strong, and I'm saying peace. Right there, they got what we want. It's a few of us. It's a few of us. Yo, what up? Yo, what up? It's Zab Super Jew, the five-time champ of the world. You know what I'm saying? When I'm around, I check out Hood Rich Magazine. Now, what's rich in your hood? All right? Let's keep it locked in here, baby. Salute. Again, I'm Johnny Ray Youngblood, the pastor of the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Want to welcome you. We have uh, a few of our members who are here today. They remember the service. So Mount Pisgah, just stand. And I want to thank you now for being here, being supportive of your pastor. All right. And, uh, and I will talk to the rest of my members who forgot that it's here or who had other plans because this is important. And trust me, next year it won't be like this. So again, welcome. Uh, we still intend to be out by 5 o'clock. And uh, we want to do everything that we can because this day is a supportive effort to BSVAC. And uh, I just met Brother Robinson uh, in the back. And it's so interesting because uh, Robert Doyle uh, is a uh, deacon here. And Brother Rudolph... And I, I would say we're the best of friends. And I've passed, you know, several times, but I confess to you that I have not been supportive of BSVAC in the years that I've been here, nor when I was at St. Paul, but that will change as of today. And I just want to figure out how to do it. I just want to figure out how to do it because if I need an ambulance, you know, I figure y'all the best ones to ride with, all right? All right. Behind them they, in your crown, when you become a king and point your notebooks at their temples, when you rob them of their knowledge, when you carry your backpack more than your basketball and pull your jeans up their your boxes, when you put down your gloves and stop fighting, when you pick up your gloves and keep fighting, when you put a rod in your spine and proclaim you ain't ready to die, take your place as the chosen people. You were man now, Moses. Each of you plucked from a river, your mother is Pharaoh's daughter. Lucky you to get to go right instead of being packed tightly down the middle. You going through the easiest of passages. Why we got to keep calling your name? You a man now, Lazarus. Come forth. And I heard they've been looking for you. 
and found you in the dust of a pipe. It's like you can't hide forever. It's like you can't turn your back with no rib. Try and stand up broken. You a man now, Adam. Act like you blew even to existence because they still going to call you a sand nigga. They still going to call you a nigga, nigga. They still going to feed you hip hop for brunch and fill your belly with that Jewish Holocaust school lunch like, like your Rwanda is not repeating itself like there was no Congo or Sudan, like there was no James Bird or Sean Bell, like the NYPD won't split you pomegranate out of fear like you ain't got the right to bear arms, but you a man now, Mordecai, and there's never been a bloodless revolution like you growing in the power, ain't the chickens coming home to roost, so you tell them. So they gonna try to nail you either way, but you tell them that you are prepared for whatever ghetto crucifix that they may fashion, cause, cause you a man now, Jesus, and your 33rd birthday has just arrived. Peacekeeper's goal and objective is to implement new norms in the community. This means establishing new rules of conduct and behavior by which our young people must govern their lives by. Therefore, defining what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior. To do this, we must meet our youth where they are, on the corners and in the projects, thus shifting the paradigm of thought in our communities to the reality that we can change our neighborhoods. Let's give the peacekeepers a hand. What time did he say this is? <laughs> I remember back in the day we used to say, what time is it? And y'all would say nation time. As we begin to develop a behavior that is necessary in order to build a nation. We appreciate you being here. You are clear why we have come. We believe that it is the responsibility of black men to correct the contradictions within the black community. See, we believe that there are two levels of responsibility. We don't want to let the oppressor off the hook. The people there, are, there is an oppressive society that is in fact responsible for the condition of our people. We will not ignore that. That's one level of responsibility. But there's another level of responsibility, and that is our responsibility to change and correct the condition of our people. And so we won't just talk about what the enemy has done. We'll focus on what it is that we can do, because we have the power, the intellect. You know that we have everything we need, black people, spend over $1.1 trillion annually. $1.1 trillion and walk around the community talking about we're poor. That this is a poor people and a poor community. We're spending over a trillion dollars annually. The Jordan brand alone. Y'all ever heard of Air Jordan? Lord, don't act like you don't know. The Air Jordan brand by itself generates $1 billion annually. That's not all Nike, that's just Jordan. Nike acknowledges that young black men are the driving force behind their success because not only do you buy sneakers, you are trendsetters globally. Young black men buy Nike, so young white men buy Nike. So young Italian men, young Latin men, young Asian men. Nike acknowledges that young black men are trendsetters globally. If you can set the trend for sneakers, can you set the trend for loving and respecting your own women? Can you change the priorities a little bit? And so the peacekeepers come, calling on the best from within, calling on our grace, calling on the best that we have. And we have everything that we need. We have talent. We have education, we have money, we have experience, we have genius. And as the sister said, you're a man now. Ready or not, you're a man now. And there are things that we have a right to expect of you because you're a man now. Your responsibility is to stabilize your community. You're a man now. Are you ready? 
We want to take it beyond just symbolism. We want to take it to where your being alive means something. As we begin to celebrate Dr. King's birthday, one of the things that Dr. King pointed out is in this whole universe of activity, there's such a thing as being too late. He said, don't let history walk right by you. Don't sleep through the movement. He said, don't sleep through the revolution. Don't let time slip away. There's such a thing as being too late. You're a man now. Don't wake up when it's too late. Right now. I'm a man now. And you are indeed. And that is one of the reasons that you are present for peace. You understand the Peacekeepers Global Initiative. There is a global initiative. That is our commitment to establishing a new environment in black communities all over the globe. If you are a trendsetter, this is the trend we want to set. If you can sell Nike, can you sell peace? If you can, spell, if you can sell scotch, can you sell peace? See, if you, can, if you can sell anything that the oppressor wants you to buy, can you sell something that's in the interest of your own people? If corporate America says you're a trendsetter, I dare you to set a trend for loving and respecting your own women. Thank you. Yeah, how y'all doing? Hey, yo, my name is Mr. Russell, you feel me? Um, I know what, you know, yo, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you today, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm not really that smart, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't really have no money like some of y'all, you know what I'm saying? But God can still use me, you know what I'm saying? He can still use me, because you know what? I know we got a couple doctors in the house or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a doctor at what, uh, of knowing what not to do. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what you looking at right now is the end result of not listening. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying what y'all doing today is real good. You know what I'm saying? I'm here, I'm here feeling the love. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling this. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I, wanna, I want y'all to know that every day I go out and I help somebody. You know what I'm saying? I talk to the children. I talk to the people in jail, you know what I'm saying? Because I want them to know what not to do. And I'm saying, I, um, I write poetry too, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go ahead and kick this to you, you know what I mean? Because this is from the heart. Hey, yo, check it, right? This whole world order is out of order. But that ain't nothing new, cut you see, the only thing still within reach is the snooze button and the remote, the TV guide, and dad's couch. Yo, when doing this next commercial, yo, I'm gonna take that trash out for real. Cause moms be tripping off some other ish. Yo, and I'm gonna get that support to you, girl. I told you, yeah. Soon as my numbers hit. Yo, and I ain't get a chance to vote. I made moves instead. See, presidents do more for me when they dead. Yo, realize that the type of poem that you is now absorbing, yo, it gets deeper than the elephant's body organs. Yo, go by America or by any means necessary. You choose your motto. Your mind's excuse me. You got some quarter I can borrow? But I'ma keep my head up once I get my face up out this toilet. Yo, lately kids be like, yo, Mr. Russell, you's an alcoholic. Well, I was trying to get help but the phone at the bar stay out of order. I'm only drinking 40s now because they cut my water. It ain't no leeway. My girl ain't giving me play because the psychic told him day, so we stay staring at each other all day. Yeah, that's when I realized it ain't even got to be no real lies. My self-esteem is getting lower. My blood pressure's rising, 
Yo, that's it, yo. I'm eat right and start exercising. Yeah, tomorrow. Cause in the meantime, yo, my man's, yo, you got some quarter I could borrow? Word life. It's more to Mr. Russell than meets the untrained ear. So once your brain clear from the champagnes and brand name gear, then we can move on. And stop procrastinating with the la la, drama, nana type fascination. Cause niggas is making fools out themselves. All iced up in that Lexus. Knowing that they project crib is roach infested. And when your brain ain't reached its limitation, your life is getting played out like the Cosby Show. It's syndication, indicating manipulation is the active ingredient in your formula. And if y'all don't get out here and help people, man, everybody gonna give up on them, man. I feel that every day, yo. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you the worst thing in the world. The worst thing in the world is to be left alone. Alone, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? You, when somebody leave you alone, man, it hurts. Every day I walk around hurting. People move away from me. They don't shake my hand. Ain't nobody in here today shake my hand. You walk right by looking at me moving away. Let me tell you something. Yo, man, they need you. Everybody needs you. That's all I got to say, man. Peace of mouth. We are grateful today to have with us our national uh, leader, our international leader, the founder of Peacemakers, Peacekeepers, Captain Dennis. First and foremost, giving honor and praise to God who's the head of my life for giving me another chance that I may be able to correct yesterday's mistakes. I want to thank our great senior emeritus pastor, Reverend Johnny Youngblood, for giving us an opportunity <laughs> to assemble, to assemble in this fine, fine, beautiful edifice we thank you, Pastor. We thank your staff. We thank your, your handsome son and everyone that you have made it comfortable for us to be in this fine, fine church. I want to thank the Brooklyn Peacekeepers and one in particular, Brother Barry, who's head this up and who did a fantastic job. <laughs> Brother Barry, we want to thank you for making sure that we, the Peacekeepers, is here to make sure your whole idea was to make us comfortable while they host this great event right here in Brooklyn, New York. We thank you, Brother Barry, and all of the Brooklyn peacekeepers. Thank you, brother. I want to thank, of course, my co-founder. I feel so good and comfortable when he's present. He keeps me on point. He's constantly telling me I'm an amateur. We was arguing who was going to go first. He'd never been no opening act. And, and it's very difficult. It really is for him to be an opening act. He told me a story that James Brown and who was the other one? Wilson Pickett was scheduled to perform, but they canceled the show because they would not want to open up for one another. <laughs> so we weren't going to cancel this show. I was going to just, just be quiet and let you open up, Bob. But I thank Bobby Meredith, our brother and our friend. Thank you, Bob, for being with us today. I want to thank every peacekeeper that have traveled far and wide to be here, as far as wide as Columbus, Ohio. My wife left out this morning, her and my niece, 5 o'clock this morning. They just got here. 
I want to thank you, lovely wife, and my niece in the back. Stand up and just wave. Let everybody see you. That's my niece right there, and that's my wife sitting next beside her. My niece ain't never been shy. <laughs> she was determined to get here. I want to say to every one of you who took time out your schedule, this would not be a reality here in New York, Brooklyn, if it wasn't for three individuals that was four who was very instrumental in bringing Brother Dennis to New York to start a peacekeepers chapter. Number one person who's not here, who've always been the support, he's the financial backing of the peacekeeper, he's always been there, he's my friend, your friend, our great brother, Russell Simmons, who was very instrumental to put up the necessary funds three years ago to bring the Peacekeepers Initiative to Queens, New York. This was done in partnership with three individuals. It was our dear beloved sister, Erica Ford, whose vision that we are living out, where's she at? She left. She had to leave Erica Ford. And on the phone in the conference call was my brother, friend from Man Up, A.T. Mitchell. He was very key and instrumental in bringing me here. And my brother, Bob Law. These were the four people that made it possible that you could see peacekeepers in Yonkers, New York, Mount Vernon, New York, Brooklyn, New York, Queens, New York, now we have it in Manhattan, New York, and very soon, God willing, we will be in Bronx, New York. But I want to thank a brother who you just sit there and heard him say some words to us. You looked at him and you walked by him. Some of you wouldn't even sit by him. But I just want him to come and stand right here. His name is Russell. And Russell is right now in character. This ain't where he is. He's one of the professors at the school. He does this as part of his work to get to the youth. See how you was treating him? See how you was treating him? My man, he stays suited and booted like this. And this is him in character. We had him out in Pleasantville last night. And we sit him next beside the police chief. Man, if you would have seen the police chief face when we sit him with his back, he had his back, and he was rocking. And the chief looking like this, like, Captain, what part of the game is this? And everybody, and my son, who didn't know, my son was going to sit down and see him and said, no, nah, I'm not sitting down with brother. But man, you were awesome. I loved, I was looking at their face, man. I was looking at the pastor at his face. I was looking, this is my man. Just say a word or two, brother. Let them hear that you ain't, you ain't crazy like that. <laughs> How y'all doing? My name's Harold Russell. I'm from, I'm from Dover, Delaware. And I'm going to tell you, when I used to go out in the suit, there was a lot, of, a lot of kids in the audience I couldn't reach. So I decided to go ahead and make my presentation a little different. But I got the same message. I got the same message as you. Every hour I go out, every week I go out and I, and I try to put my hour in to help other children, to go to the prisons, to go to, you know, uh, substance abuse programs. And I talk to kids and, and people all over, all over the Northeast. So I just want, want you to know that I really thank you for uh, supporting me and what I'm doing. I support you. And uh, let's tie some ropes together and, and, and make some love and, and keep the peace. <laughs> thank you so much. See, the scripture says, right, Pastor, and if I quote it right, be very careful who you entertain, for you may be entertaining the angels of God. See, be careful how you judge people. You know, I never know. But nevertheless, I thank you so much, and I just want to get to our program because it's really, really is not about me. But I want to share to those who are here for the first time, who, are, who heard about this great initiative. The Peacekeepers Global Initiative is probably one of the fastest, fastest, fastest growing crime-fighting gun violence initiative in America. We last night 
in Pleasantville, New Jersey, open up our 21st chapter in Pleasant, our 21st chapter. We have just opened up this month alone, Bob, two chapters, two chapters in one month. The 20th chapter was opened up in Riviera Beach, Florida. And what it looks like is that people understand that they're tired of the senseless violence that has taken our young people out in an early age. But I want to say this to you. We're not confused about our objective. We're not confused. We know that we would never stop violence. We know we would never stop killing. So we don't say we stopping the killing, we stopping the violence. We don't, we don't say that. Because as soon as we say the peacekeepers are about stopping the killing, stopping the violence, then media would judge us by that. And every time there's a killing, y'all didn't stop that killing. Every time, y'all didn't stop that violence. So we don't use a language that we can never accomplish. As long as the people live contrary to God, they would never stop killing and they would never stop violence. So we say, we the fact that as we ask every man, and the reason why we ask the men is because it's clear, dear family, with 75% of the homes absent of a male figure, it's very clear, dear family, that we must put the head back on the body. And I want to say this, and we're going to get to the next phase. When you take a look at the definitions that people are saying about violence. I read an article, article in Newark, New Jersey, where they say they want to track violence like an infectious disease. I understand my brother and sister Erica and the ceasefire model who says we want to declare violence as a public health issue. I understand that. But if we ask the question, what is the real disease? When black folks kill black folks, there's nothing but one disease, and that disease is called self-hatred. That's the disease. And if we don't approach and understand that, how could we ever apply the cure? So what is the cure to self-hatred? The cure to self-hatred is self-love. You would never hurt yourself if you loved yourself. 
Where the question we need to understand because we don't need nobody to define our problem. It is evident what our problem is. The great Dr. Johnson, Omar Johnson says, you can never change your condition until you accept the truth on how you got in it. We are running from the truth of how we got in this condition because when we go to trace the truth of it, we lay the blame at somebody's doorstep and you don't want to deal with that. You don't want to deal with that. So when we say self-hatred, self-hatred would make brother kill brother. Jealousy and eminence was with the root cause of why Cain killed his brother Abel. Well, if that's the case, brother would kill brother and self-hatred is at the root, then it's very easy to solve that. It's very easy to solve that. Teach self-love. Whoa, it's not that easy. Because Mr. Muhammad said, you can't love what you don't know. So the key to that paradigm is you and I must teach our young people a knowledge of themselves. If we don't know who I am and what I am, and I let the world define who I am and what I am, and the world define me as an Uncle Tom, a Negro, a coon, a handbo. I had no contribution to onward society. I had nothing to do with mathematics. And if you keep making your children believe that they tell us that's what they are, then I don't have no healthy respect for myself because I don't value myself, because I don't see no value in what I've contributed to the world. But that's a lie. And we can't keep passing the lie on to our children because you don't know who you are. So instead of dealing with it the way it should be dealt with, because if we ask some of you parents, do you have a knowledge of yourself? How can you say you have a knowledge of yourself and you'll come up here with a name that don't even represent you? That tells a wise person, you don't know who you are. But we made, we made mockery with Malcolm because he took an X. We make mockery with Muhammad Ali because he refused to call himself Cassius Clay. So you make mockery because you don't know who you are. But I'm here to tell you today, if we want to get somewhere, you cannot save none of them children out there drowning if you don't know how to swim. If you, I don't care how you see somebody trying to save you.
Thank you. 